So today I'm going to show you how to use a tool script to create an extra variable where you will have a drop down tab and you can update in the editor the different buildings that we create. Now typically you would just use a sprite node for this but I am actually going to use a tile map node in this instance mainly because I've just been playing with tile maps. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at this tile set. I went ahead and just made a brand new tile set for this instance. Now the first three, so 0, 1, 2, are all single tiles. So you just click your region and you click single tile and you click a new and you click single tile. And these other ones, so 3 through 11, are actually all auto tiles. And how I set those up, you go like this, you have your new auto tile, you click that, you make the region around the building that you want, and you actually go to the bit mask. I've kind of gone over this in the previous videos, but this one has a 3x3 three three minimal. So basically if there's two tiles next to each other, it'll form this nice little house. And this one is the same, and this one is the same. And then we also have these castles. This is a 2x2 two two auto tile. And then the last one is these are also 2x2 two two auto tiles. Now I went ahead and I went through and I named all of these the correct names. So when you look here, you have your blue castle, your blue house, all of these different types of things. And you could use this tile set to just, like I said, build the blue castle like we have in previous videos. But I want it to update with this tab here. So we add a script to the tile map. And the first thing you always have to do with a tool script is add tool at the top. We still have the extends. And we're going to enumerate all the different types of houses or castles that we want. So if you remember these first three were just the single tiles, they only cover one tile. And then these three were the two that were side by side, so a one by two rectangle. These three were a two by two square, and these were a three by three square. Now this just enumerates them so that they're in the script. If you actually want to be able to access them in the inspector, then you have to export the building types. So the same thing we enumerated all of these as, and we're going to set it to a new variable. And then we're going to use the set get to update the building in the editor. So basically all set get means is when you update this variable or click an update to whichever house you want that's changing that variable, it will automatically call this function. And when you use a set get, it always sends a variable with the new thing you set it to. So the first thing you have to do is actually update it. Otherwise, the change won't actually happen. If you don't have this building equals new, you won't be able to actually update it because the change doesn't happen because it automatically sends the information to this function and it expects you to actually update it yourself. Now, another thing is I got rid of that comment and I still can't change what's going on, make sure you save your script. This little asterisk means that there's something that isn't saved. And now it should work. So after we actually update what we changed, uh, we're going to go ahead and change the tiles, or the cells of the tile map, to be the new picture. So the first thing we're going to do is clear out a the 3x3 three three grid that the cells are in. So we have all three of these cells. We're going to completely clear those out. For x and 3, for y and 3, we're going to set that cell to negative 1, which just means empty. Now we have this match statement here that we're going to check new. So when you set this variable and this set get sends the argument here, it's sending a number of where in this list you changed it to. So the brown house is 0. And it just goes up by 1 to 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to 11, like we had in the tile set. So when you do a match statement, you can actually check to see if it's one of these three numbers. So in this instance, if it's 0, or if it's 1, or if it's 2, it will do this code, and so on, with all four of these different matches. Since this is just a single tile, it's very straightforward. We're just going to set the 0, 0 cell 
to that new uh, either the brown house, the house with the garden, or the blue house. If you have the any of these from three up, remember that those were all auto tiles. So we're actually going to have to do the same thing, but we're going to have to update the bit mask region. When we have a 4x in 2, that's going to loop through these two cells right here and set them to that tile set number. And again, if we don't have this line of code right here, the update bit mask region, it will not look correct. See, it's not telling it to update. It's just setting the default. It thinks that there's just one here and one here. And if we do update the bit mask, just so you know, these variables are the, like a rect2. This is the starting point. So this is just an empty vector, so it's kind of like 0, 0. And this is how big of a square that it's going to cover. So it's going to go 2 on the x and 1 on the y. We will save it. It updates correctly. So the next two are basically the same thing, but if you remember, 6 through 8, they were all a 2 by 2 square, so we have to do a 2 by 2 square, and we will set that to the new one. We'll update a 2 by 2 square, opposed to a 2 by 1 square, and in the last one, it's a 3 by 3 square, and it does exactly the same thing, and we'll update a 3 by 3 square. So I'm not actually 100% for sure if there's really an advantage to using a tile map for this instead of just a sprite, but it was just what I was playing with today, so I thought I'd make a video about how you can use it in a tool. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and if you like this video, please give it a like and subscribe.